the gym. They're starting the sea bag drag, we call it. They're collecting all their gear and they're putting it in their bag and they're gonna drag it back over here to the dorms. Kind of the official start, the sea bag drag. Okay? Um, with me, I have the company commanders from both second and fourth company. These are seniors that have been in the leadership program since their sophomore year. They're also basically in charge of the companies. I supervise them. They run the companies. They do the day-to-day -day operations. It's a part of the leadership program at Mass Maritime, which is what makes this place unique. That the, the cadets here have the opportunity to develop their leadership skills not up there in the sky through a book by my actually doing it. So fourth company is first class Romano. Second company is first class Mogadishian. Oh, I said that right. What about, about me? This is my third academic year at Mass Maritime. I'm also the assistant woman soccer coach. My background is in education and in counseling, actually. Um, my, Lieutenant Mike Kelly is a graduate of Mass Maritime. He has been working at the academy as an officer for approximately eight years, I believe. He also coaches baseball and football. Okay, so we're, we're involved in a lot of things. Um, my goal as a company officer basically is to provide coaching, mentoring, and developmental opportunities for your cadet candidates. And what I mean by that is they're at this, this pivotal point in their lives where they are learning. They might be 18, so they're officially an adult. I'm sorry, I don't buy that. I don't buy that. They're learning how to become adults, the responsibilities that go along with it, what it means to be away from home for most of them, probably for the first time, how to start making decisions on their own, how to deal with consequences on their own, it's, it's a big deal at this point. My hope is that, is that I'm helping them in that process, okay? Um, routine day during orientation. They get up at 4.45 in the morning and they go all day until 10 o'clock at night, okay? That's orientation, that's for two weeks. This most likely will be for most of them. One of the hardest things they've done up to this point in their life. What you will see in two weeks is somebody different than you dropped off in a really good way. It's amazing to see the transformation, okay? Orientation is different than the regular year. In the regular year, not saying that it's not regimented and strict, but it's a little bit different. Regular year, we get up at about six o'clock in the morning, go until about 10 o'clock, there's time off in between. Okay, um, the cadet leadership, we have six senior officers, and then we have 12 junior squad leaders. Your kids have a lot of support if they need it. Not only in learning about what is expected of them from the regiment, but also, hey, I'm having a hard time with my roommate. They can reach out to their squad leader and, and get help and support around that. Hey, I'm struggling in math. Well, you know, I can help you, or I can help you get set up at the tutoring center. It really is about supporting. There's a lot of support system. One thing I will tell you is that there is a chain of command. We are regimented. I urge you that if your cadet candidate calls you and says, hey, I'm having a problem with my roommate, please say to them, did you talk to your squad leader? Did you talk to, did your squad leader talk to your TRO or your company commander? Okay, urge them to handle it themselves and go through the proper channels. I am by no means not saying don't call me if you have a concern, please do. I'm always available, I have my cards up here. But put it back on them to figure out how, how to handle it, how to do it and use what is in place, okay? I'm gonna have them explain the that leadership, the structure of that a little bit more. Good afternoon, I'm first class Michael Romano. Um, I'm the fourth company commander, and I just want to stress to you all that uh, I know Mr. Migravichin and I, our staffs, are trained not only for orientation to support uh, the cadet candidates, but throughout the year. 
All of them have gone through training to um, help the kids out, not only with their academics, but with the regimented side of this academy. It's a hard switch for the cadet candidates at first, but by no means are they on it, are they in it by themselves. Um, all the squad leaders are prepared to build them up these next two weeks in a special way, um, and then throughout the year support them. Uh, like Mr. Romano said, uh, first class, Steve Mendoza, second coming commander. Uh, to go off what he said, you know, these next two weeks, it is going to be extremely challenging for your sons and your daughters, but like you said, there's a lot of support. The squad leaders really want them to excel and succeed in every single way, academically, mentally, physically. Um, so I'm sure they'll get through it. I'm sure his parents, they've done a great job raising them to get to this point. And um, so we're just going to really test them to see how far they can go and see how much they can do. Because they're going to be challenged in ways that they've never been challenged before. And it's really exciting at the end of the two weeks to see them really, to see how far they've, they've, uh, they've developed and, and uh, matured as young men and, and women. So um, I wish them all the best. Uh, the blogs that we'll be writing, uh, they should be on the website every single night. So you check out maritime.edu. Uh, you'll see reports from us on a uh, daily basis explaining to you what your connect is are going through doing out here on campus. Uh, Mr. Ramon, no, that's <clears throat> one of the main focuses or, or help for us is that um, our website, it really does this. That blog, I know when I went through orientation, my parents looked at it and were encouraged by it or saw what we were doing so that they could kind of follow us through it. So I encourage you guys to take advantage of that. We'll be working on it as well as the other companies as well. There's pictures on there as well. They get to also get a visual of what it is that, that the cadet candidates are going through every day. But the blogs are very helpful. I, I have no doubt in my mind that every single cadet candidate that showed up today will make it through. You know why? Because they showed up in the first place. They chose Mass Maritime Academy. That tells me a lot right off the bat. It tells me a lot. Okay. Um, a few more things, then I'll open it up to question and answer. Orientation graduation, I'm not sure if dates were given out to you. That's uh, 30 August. That's a Friday. Make sure you get here a half an hour early if you want to get good seats. Recognition ceremony. Recognition ceremony is right now. Everybody's a cadet candidate. On the 29th of September is the recognition ceremony, which means they get recognized as fourth class cadets. That means they're officially, uh, what's the word, like cadet, basically. They're, they become fourth class. They pass the training. They pass the muster, so to speak. Hope coming is October 5th. It's a Saturday. All the freshmen have to be here. So if there's any event that's going on, they have to be here. October 5th. One last thing, C term. Make sure that you have a passport. If they don't have a passport, start that now. You need the passport. The, the ports this year are Curacao, Barbados, Colombia, and Miami. All right, it's going to be a great trip. Gone for six weeks. Um, every, every, all the information is on the website. There's an academic calendar. There's actually a specific website for C term. Parents Association is a great way to find out any information. It's, it's all on the website, okay? I'm going to open it up to questions and answers now. Hopefully answers. Any questions? All we need is a passport for C term. Um, for the, all the freshmen have to go in C term. On C term, what happens is they go through a, a three-day ro rotation of each major that's offered here, and then they officially decide what major they're going to be. But it's a great way for them <coughs> to actually get some exposure to all the different majors before they make a decision. Okay? Um, it's also a great experience to live on a ship for six weeks and uh, go to some pretty interesting places. Just the passport, okay? Passport is due by Thanksgiving. 
basically before Thanksgiving break. Okay? Hopefully smoothly. <laughs> okay, so right now. When, so right now, Fourth Company is living in a temporary dorm because of the construction. Um, we graduate on August 30th. We cannot go back into Fourth Company until September 1st. On Monday, all the freshmen have to report back on Labor Day, which is Monday, at 4 o'clock at 1600. On that day, they will get their key and they will go into their permanent room. I know it's, it's a bit of a juggle because they can't, I wish, I wish I had the possibility just to have them bring their stuff into the room, but we, we don't have access, unfortunately. Right. If you're out of state, we have out-of-state storage, but I can't do it for every single cadet in my company. Okay? We're, at, we're out of state, so um, everything that we have in the new building, is that going to be able to be stored? If you're from out-of-state, yeah, we can store that. If you're from out-of-state, we have out-of-state storage. That was the question. Okay? Um, we're also from out-of-state. I was wondering what uh, day and time of uh, orientation officially ends. We were wondering, uh, I've got my daughter's cell phone and her charger, and I was hoping that after orientation she would contact us to let us know what else she needs us to bring to from New Jersey up to her. You're asking when they get their cell phones back? Well, I'm at wondering if I could leave it with her commander and have her give it to her after orientation ends, depending on when it ends. Right. Um, basically, orientation... Um, Tonight, any contra contraband will be taken from the kids um, and put in, a, put in a bag and secured in the office. Once orientation is officially over, and the, the um, ceremony is at, at 20 hundred, at 8 o'clock at night. So we should be done by 9 o'clock at night. On August 30th? On Friday, August 30th. Right, there's a marching right, there's a marching competition at 1830. 200 is the actual ceremony, so it's about an hour. So they can't have their cell phones until prior to that, no. But nine o'clock at night will be when it's over. Yes. transferred any credits in, the registrar would have all that information already at this point. Question was, when we go on sea term and we're in port, are they allowed to see family? Yes. You cannot get onto the ship without permission from the master. That will not happen, quite frankly. But to be able to see them out you know, meet them outside the gates of the ship. Obviously, the court security is pretty high anywhere you go for obvious reasons. But yes, the only thing that you need to be careful of is so we pick these ports. We get approval from the state, right? There are times 
that our ports get changed. Whether we didn't get clearance to go in, whether something happened last minute, it happened this year. So we were planning on going to Barbados, it did not happen, we ended up in Puerto Rico. There were a few people that were meeting their family in Barbados. <laughs> no, they weren't. <laughs> okay, it does happen. I'm not saying don't do it, it's rare, but just be prepared that that's a possibility, okay? But by all means, if we're in Miami and you fly down to Miami and they, they'll have two days off in port and then one day they're on watch, okay? That's no matter what, what division they're in, that's how that works. Let me get back here for a Taken 